Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Agnes and I am a data scientist. Today's video is about my data science interview experiences so far. I've attended five, six interviews so far and I got three of them. I will go through each one of them in detail before starting the video. This video is for beginners and people who are early in their careers. Maybe you want to switch to data science from software engineering. I don't know. If you're interested in data science, you can watch this. If you're a seasoned data scientist with a good amount of experience, uh, like more than four years of experience, this may not help you because I am a beginner myself. I consider myself as an entry-level data scientist still. So if you're a junior data scientist or if you are into data science or if you're a student who is interested in getting into a career in data science, keep watching. So I have uh, all, I have more than three years of professional industry experience as a data scientist. Also, I'm job hunting right now and I try to share my journey on this channel as much as possible. So, so hit subscribe if you want to see more. I'm going to include my data science internship interview experience as well because that has played a key role in me getting into data science. So. I completed my master's in 2020 right when the pandemic started but I already had an offer in hand uh, so I was not that worried okay the very first interview I attended was not remote it was um, it was in the office it was before the pandemic I joined as an intern in I'm not gonna mention the companies so my first internship was in an MNC in one of the biggest service-based companies in India. They had this research lab. They have a lot of research labs in different locations. So our college was working with one of those research labs and we got an opportunity to attend the internship interview. And there was a test. Actually, we did very poorly on the test first because it was paper-based and it was in Java. I, I don't know Java. They had given us a bunch of assignments before, basic things like classification, regression, anomaly detection, image classification, stuff like that, four or five assignments. And they gave us an opportunity to attend the interview. They gave an opportunity for everyone who had applied. So we went to the office. This was uh, one of my first face-to-face -face interviews, technical interviews, and the head of the lab was there. Uh, there was another employee and they, they started asking fundamentals, fundamental questions. What is classification? What is regression? Uh, label data. Very fundamental things when it comes to machine learning. Since we came from a computer science background, they didn't ask a lot about statistics, but they asked you know, whether you know the fundamentals like mean, mode, median, things like that. They pressed us to know whether we had any practical experience. So I had done, you know, I had participated in a hackathon before, but I was the person, I and one of my teammates, we were the, we were in charge of building the machine learning model. So I was kind of, I had done projects before. So I was very familiar with the flow, data, everything. I passed that interview gave me a lot of confidence and two of us got selected for the internship and it was one year internship. So I do include that in my uh, experience because we used to go to the office every day. We used to work with them and it was a one year experience. I was getting stipend from ASAP anyway, so I didn't care much. It was covering all my expenses, but it gave me a disadvantage uh, when we me and my husband as a family we tried to uh, apply for immigration and you know just international companies when i try to apply for international opportunities they don't consider unpaid internship as experience but they do consider paid internship as experience we are classmates and we met in met during our masters and he also got internship in another uh, MNC. He had, you know, a little bit of stipend, 10k per month. His experience is valid experience when we try to apply for international opportunities and immigration. My internship experience doesn't count. So if you can try to get at least, I mean, the amount doesn't matter, at least 
a little bit of stipend for your internship it will help in the long run so that's one thing i learned the internship itself was in a in nlp i got good fundamentals of tax processing nlp different libraries all of that i got a lot of exposure from that internship since it was an mnc the pace was super slow so if you're a student i would suggest to go for an internship in a startup my last company was a not a startup they had grown out of the startup size but they are still a small company the amount of freedom you get to try out different technologies and interact with the team it's just different in smaller companies or startups and in big mnc's so if you want to maximize your learnings during your internship i would say go for a startup uh, negotiate with them to give you an amount as stipend even even if it's a small amount and you have to have a record of that amount coming to your account that's the internship experience i would say learn the fundamentals do some projects remember theory theoretical concepts doesn't get you far in computer science your practical knowledge is what matters you will enjoy learning computer science a lot more if you start doing projects i was not always interested in computer science but when you start doing start building things on your own it, it just gets interesting so that's the internship experience so in my last company uh, the startup uh, i have seen a lot of interns and they got amazing opportunities work in live projects and you get a lot of opportunities if you are really good in startups the learning curve is much better i mean in mncs there are a lot of hoops to jump before you know doing even an update on your system so waste a lot of time there are policies that might there are a lot of admin things to handle in mncs so remember that and a paper based coding test is i don't know i i i don't agree with it you can do a hacker rank coding test why do you do that it doesn't work so in internships i feel like they are looking for people who have that you know have that interest to learn new things who are a bit more updated who are genuinely interested and they can see it through if you are practicing just for the interview or if you are genuinely interested in technology if you are updated in technology they'll see it through so it's not like an examination prep you have to plan it a little bit before in your second year or third year and start building habits so for me personally taking a medium subscription it's like 199 per month is not a waste to when it comes to data science a lot of the articles are not that great but a lot of them are great i have a medium subscription follow people who are data scientists on social media you'll get a good exposure from that they had also asked me if i had done any certifications so i i had done a bunch of i had audited a bunch of courses on coursera so i told them that and they were okay with it they didn't ask me for the certificate so if you if you don't want to pay for the courses just audit them just go through their syllabus and learn from different sources it will do so the second interview was for my full time job this was not a data science interview i got into the same mnc through placement again after the internship it was not related to data science it was a generic interview they asked me an algorithm or something uh, they didn't ask me any data science questions i worked in a service based mnc so once you get into the company uh, you have to take interviews for each project so once i got once i joined the company after one or two i think it took one or two months for them to allocate me into a project there was no work in that project and you know there are small labs in inside all mncs different labs headed by different people and i got in contact with one of those labs heads through one of my friends and by that time everything was remote it was the pandemic it was the middle of the pandemic and everything was remote so i took my second data science interview over the phone one of the leads called me by that time i had done a, done a variety of projects uh, in my kaggle my dad has a business so i had access to some data from the business and i i used that data to build some visualizations and i had done some projects on kaggle my aim was to you know become a kaggle grandmaster and all that and i had some experience building neural networks i had strong fundamental knowledge and they took me in they all also gave me uh, a take home assignment that had to be completed in 2 3 days it was a notebook just to you know manipulate some videos apply some text 
text extraction it was uh, super easy i did that send them that after a few days they got back to me and they hired me in research and development so my work was mostly on the mostly on the machine learning side so i did a lot of deep learning since i already had some experience in nlp i did a lot of nlp project mostly text based projects i was familiar with all the libraries we did a lot of pocs there i stayed there for um close to 2 years then i switched you know the journey it's up on this channel you can you'll see the videos so then i switched to a small company i got a good hike before getting into that company i got that job through linkedin so the keeping a very updated linkedin profile helps a lot so i put a post and one of the recruiters contacted me and they also had a technical interview which was based on my experience the project i did my fundamental knowledge and they also got me a take home assignment the assignment was a pretty large assignment i didn't do it completely i took a small subset of the data and did you know a part of the assignment to show that i can do it because i was going to multiple companies hiring processes at the time so i didn't have time to sit and do these end day projects so i just did a little bit of that and send them the result so they got back to me and they offered me they gave me an offer i after some negotiations i accepted it that's my last company that's also my more of an engineering type role i was hired as a data scientist and in both of my full time jobs i used to train people because since ai is such a new technology and uh, it's changing every single day new models are coming out new papers are coming out and i used to train people that was an added you know responsibility so that was there it's yeah take home assignments are a little bit tricky if the assignment is like a full project i wouldn't probably do it because so these are the offers that i accepted now i've taken a few other interviews there was this on site interview i attended which made me think that on site interviews at least the first screening shouldn't be on site because because it's such a waste of time i waited there for like you know half a day more than half a day uh just to you know meet the interviewer and they also asked me a lot of fundamentals fundamental not about the projects i did uh, but more on you know mathematical fundamentals and analytical analytics so i didn't pass the technical interview for two of the interviews i attended these are also mnc's one thing i noticed these companies would advertise a data analyst role as a data scientist or ml engineer role so both of the companies that rejected me were looking for people that they didn't care about machine learning or model building experience they were looking for more of analytics people one of the companies had a test for a uh, sql and python i passed the test but i don't think i did well in the test though because well, my first project was in nlp since i come from in an engineering background my sql and analytical side my sql and statistics were a little bit you know weaker than my engineering side at the time it was a bit difficult for me but now i had taken a lot of courses in statistics and i am doing projects i'm doing lead code now i have the confidence in sql and statistics at the time i was a little bit weak so one important thing to note is that you cannot depend just on your work experience data science is such a amalgamation of different areas like mathematics computer science and statistics and a little bit of engineering you will have to learn a lot of things on your own not everybody comes from a pure data science background a lot of people come from engineering background a lot of people come from statistics background you can fill your knowledge gaps uh self learning i've done a video on you know strategies for self learning i've done a bunch of data science videos in the past you can go and check them out so this is my overall experience i'll share more on my job hunt process and i'm trying out freelancing right now so so i'll share more details in the upcoming videos if you like the video subscribe like comment somebody asked if i post on instagram in the last video but i i don't post on instagram my account is private I have a public account because i haven't started posting on it the account is linked in my profile 
you can uh, go to the youtube main page you'll see an instagram account there that's me that's not i'm not following anyone nobody's following me it's a, just a template account right now but i'm planning to post on instagram so that i can reach more people that's all for today's video in a nutshell do a lot of personal projects take it at a set that you are interested in for example right now i'm doing an analytics projects on my expense data that's the only data that i had i track all my expenses from 2022 so i have the expense data from two two years past two years so i'm doing an analytics project <laughs> I'm also learning a little bit of Excel. I'm also strengthening my analytical side right now. I'm doing a little bit of Excel, uh, doing a bunch of courses in data engineering as well because I just want to, there are so many job families in data science. There are data engineers, supply scientists. There are a lot of different options. I read a book recently. I just want to show you that. That's a really good book. It's called Visual Thinking uh, wait a minute. <laughs> this is the book Visual Thinking by Temple Grandin. It's about different kinds of, you know, thinking, visual, the different kinds of thinkers and their the way their brain works and stuff like that. There are a bunch of research papers in that area as well. So just gave me a lot of insights on the way I think from childhood. Not everyone thinks in the same way. Some people are more verbal, some people are more visual. Apparently, if you're a spatial visual thinker, you'll do really well in abstract subjects like data science, statistics, mathematics, coding, things like that. And uh, I don't entirely agree with the book, you know, it's all a spectrum. Everybody is somewhat of a visual and verbal thinker, but the amount, it's on a scale, I feel like. So it gave me a lot of insights on the way I think. It's a really good book if you want to grab it. That's all for today's video. See you in the next video. Bye.